Hello, Ray Phoenix here, and welcome to Let's Play LEGO Star Wars The Video Game Party. We're about to witness one of the greatest battles in the entire Star Wars saga. That's right, Obi-Wan and his apprentice Anakin and his girlfriend Padme were just kidnapped, and, they were, and now they're being held hostage on, on, on this Geonosis planet where Count Duke looks over. But oh look, Mace Windu arrived and hold his lightsaber at Jango Fett. He's ready to strike at his Shatterpoint, as described in the Star Wars novel, Shatterpoint. But oh look, Mace Windu hesitated, and now look what happened. The whole galaxy is at war, all because of Mace Windu being, you know, hesitating and not actually going to fight. Yep, and that's why the Clone Wars happened. So now there's a full battle of Jedi, hundreds of Jedi are about to get killed, all because of this big war of the Separatists on this planet. This actually was one of the worst battles for Jedi, so the Jedi Order really started to fall apart, where hundreds of them got killed. Only two Padawans survived this war, this battle, and they were Anakin Skywalker and Barriss Offee, which was, uh, you know, which is, you know, quite sad, actually, so many Padawans came here and died. This really was a Jedi at their weak point. Episode 2 really was the bee's knees of the Star Wars saga, as some might put it. But look at that. Mace Windu's not going to get killed, because Mace Windu's the greatest master in the Jedi Order. He's pretty much like the leader of the Council, almost. And, and you can't have nothing's low budget Lego, sorry, not Lego, sorry, it's not Lego, it's just a toy, it's like a puppet show of toys. He's pretty, Mace Windu's pretty much the lead dictator of the Jedi Order. He's like, everyone is listening to me now! But we're not there yet. These are just landmine things there, look at that, one of them blew up and it created a bunch of studs. But destroyed that super battle droid. This is one of the first times I see super battle droids in the Star Wars saga. Is in this battle, this battle at Geonosis. This is, and then later they'd have a second battle here during the Clone Wars, like well into the Clone Wars. But that's not happening yet. Right now we have some Jedi saved. We have Padme. We just rescue Padme. You now we have Obi Wan, Anakin to rescue. There's a lot of droids here. They're just gonna keep barraging us with droids and sending us all the droids possible. I thought the scene was pretty impressive back in the beaters. What was also as impressive too was this is the first time we ever saw Mace Windu with his signature purple lightsaber. And then became established after us and Mace Windu has a purple lightsaber. Because before this, he was originally written as having a blue lightsaber, as seen in Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles, and a lot of the like, Star Wars comics that were released around 2000. Mace Windu has a blue lightsaber, but now, but then they changed it in this game to purple lightsaber, so he has a purple lightsaber. Well, they changed it for the movie because Samuel L. Jackson requested to have a purple lightsaber. He thought the character would look better and stand out more and be more unique with a purple lightsaber, which is actually a pretty good thing. Because at this point in time, this is when George Lucas established that the only lightsaber colors that Jedi, that light sided Jedi characters allowed to have are blue or green. They can't have so many unique, colorful colors like they did in the Star Wars comics that were written by other people. I often, I often, I've said this before, but I often think a lot of those writers, those comic writers that write the Star Wars comics, a lot of them are a lot better writers than George Lucas. George Lucas just should have just allowed Jedi to have so many cool different colors. Would have made the Jedi Order stand out more, be more unique. But oh no, it's just uniform blue or green and purple for Mace Windu because, well, he's Mace Windu. But still, purple actually is one of the most unique colors. I wish orange was still a color in, in this, um, in the, in, in the stars. I think it, it does still exist, but it's just very rare. I think orange is also a very unique color. I like Plo Koon's lightsaber in the Star Wars comics in that game, Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. It's already got a super kit piece. It's one of the easiest levels in the game to get a super kit piece. That's saying a lot. It's easy to get a lot of them in this game. No, I didn't want to do that. Come on. It's really hard to focus where you want to actually, you know, use the force. So I think we've rescued everyone now at this point. So now, we're getting a bunch of droids. Here's what I recommend. You can spend a few hours just roaming around the battlefield looking for your target. So what I recommend doing is just stay with your party as you see what I'm doing here. I'm staying with Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme. And I'm just going to let the... I'm just gonna let the targets come to me. That's right, they automatically come to you. So just stay put, stay where you are, and they will come to you eventually. It might, it's still gonna take some time, but eventually, you know, it's gonna work. It's gonna be. And the reason the Geonosis battle droids is the only time you ever really see these battle droids in, in, this, in this game, because they use, because they are like, they have the tone, color tone, that's a little, like, I don't know, it's like, more like a, the sand color, because like sandstone kind of thing. But we only see them in this. Geonosis Arena. The next, um, the next episode, they go back to how they were in episode one in terms of 
color schemes. At least in this game they did. Maybe because they were lazy or something. I didn't want to come up with a lot more things. I could see some obvious examples of laziness though already stated in this game. Not that I'm complaining, but then again, a lot of games have laziness. And even movies have lazy spots in them too. I think, the, I think almost everyone could have said that they've been lazy at least once in their work, right? Even though laziness is not always a great thing. That's what Lazy Town is for. I always wondered why they called that show Lazy Town. It's supposed to encourage kids to not be lazy and to get up and do active, and do physical activity. But instead, the title actually makes it sound more like it's good to be lazy, so. You know, and then there's Robbie Rotten, that likable villain that, that, that likable meme villain that everyone loves. It's a shame that guy died. They're talking about making a statue of him in Iceland. And he's pretty much the Icelandic Jim Carrey. He even supposedly played the Grinch once in a live theater version of, well, the Grinch. I never actually watched Lazy Town much as a kid. That's mostly because it, when it was on, I was too old for preschool shows and that came on. I, was, I did see it a few times on CBS, on, you know, Nick on CBS, and they had that in the, in the 2000s. Nick on CBS is a pretty good idea, but unfortunately it fell victim to the FCC, to the evil FCC, and their greedy EI rules where they have to put educational shows on network stations on Saturday morning. If I want educational content, I go watch PBS. That's what PBS is for. Keep the educational stuff out of Saturday morning. But no, the FCC will never listen to that. That's how the FCC is. The FCC is, you know, not that good. A lot of you'll bash it all the time. They could even solve the Max Headroom incident back in 1987 when a Max Headroom interrupted an episode of Doctor Who on PBS. So there's only one more Super Battle Droid left in this battalion of droids we're going to, uh, to fight. Oh, I think I saw his arm. Yeah, there he is. See, like I told you this, come you. This is actually the best tactic. I remember as a kid, I didn't know that tactic as a kid. So I'd spend hours running around and, oh look, we're gonna send Jang up that. He's gonna put his traditional old helmet on. You see his face through the helmet? Because the way his helmet's designed, but now it's all black. Because normally the head part would be all black. The natural helmet part would just be, you know, that's the part we see through, but if his head was black, then he would just, you know, look black. But that's how the, that's how the original Jango Pet, Boba Fett, Lego designs are. They changed it now in the more recent designs. More recent designs are different. They're actually more accurate to how, to how it is in, in, in the movies. It's unknown how this Jango Fett got Mandalorian bat and armor. You know, it's the Mandalorian armor, kind of armor the Mandalorians wear. And those Mandalorians never show their face. I sometimes wonder what they look like underneath. Maybe they're aliens. Well, we know what Jango Fett looks like, because we know Jango Fett. They cloned him. They made a bunch of clones of him. And for Mace Windu, this is going to be a traumatizing moment. For Mace Windu, because Mace Windu just cut Jango Fett's head off. Because so long, you rating. And it's now, this movie is now rated PG, all because Jango Fett's head gets removed. Oh, sad. Now this movie has the same rating that Disney's Frozen has. So Yoda comes to the scene in a new Republic gunship. It's gonna take us off back to, I don't know where. We're gonna go find Dooku, I think, and there's Boba Fett holding onto his father's severed head. And so we unlocked Mace Windu, possibly the greatest character introduced to us in these prequels, and Padme. And we got the super kit piece and a few mini kits. Adi, 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 same old, same old. This is Ray Phoenix, signing out.